What is up everyone? Dark Side Phil here. And uh have you heard today's big news from Oculus Rift? That's right. It was announced today that the Oculus Rift is open for available pre-orders right now. And people have been asking for years, when will the Oculus Rift be available for purchase? What's going on? The news hit the internet today to varied opinions. I'm going to tell you the details, and then I'm going to tell you my personal opinion on the subject, okay? So the Oculus Rift is available right now for pre-order if you go to the Oculus website. All right, what do you get with it? Well, what I actually did is I brought up the website here to show you exactly from the horse's mouth what they said. You get, as you can see, the, uh, the, the pre-orders are available. The first shipment is March 28th. Um, you will get the Oculus Rift headset along with built-in headphones, built-in microphone, the sensor bar, a remote control, and a Xbox One controller. That is right, it was a big announcement a couple months ago that every single Oculus Rift will be coming with an Xbox One controller. That's how you're going to be controlling this device, all right? Now, <clears throat> this is what it'll look like when you get it, which is pretty neat and spiffy, I have to admit. That's a pretty nice uh, package to get there. And the thing that everyone's talking about right now is the price. 599 United States dollars. Wow. So let's talk a little bit about that. Because here's the thing, and here's why the whole internet is a buzz about this. For years, we've been hearing about the Oculus Rift. For years, we've been hearing it's the next wave. VR is the new wave of gaming, right? And all the gaming media have been hyping this device, and they've had it at E3 and other things, and even sent out dev kits to certain people who tried it and said, oh, it's the best thing ever, right? But the thing we always wondered was what was the price point going to be for this device? Because that could, let's face it, it could make or break a device the cost of it. Will mainstream gamers adapt and, and buy this Oculus Rift? Well, for $599 US dollars, I have to be a little skeptical. And the thing that I think a lot of people are kind of angry about is that the rumor and or almost the illusion that Oculus was kind of spreading out there for the past several years is that it was going to sell for around 400 US dollars. So a $200 price jump from what initially everyone kind of expected this to cost could be a pretty big problem for the Oculus. In addition, this is not a game console. I want to make that abundantly clear. Unlike the other device that sold for $599 US dollars that launched the PlayStation 3, the Oculus Rift is not a game console. It's a peripheral for your gaming device, in this case, a gaming PC. And if you don't have a gaming PC that's equipped and good enough to work with the Oculus Rift, you will have to buy one. And incidentally, I also have the stats for that. Also straight from the Oculus Rift blog, right down here. And as you can see, it's not exactly a low-end PC. You're going to need a graphics card that's an NVIDIA GTX 970 or AMD R9 290 equivalent or greater. My gaming PC, which I bought two years ago, doesn't have that. It actually has two generations previous of a graphics card, so that would be a required upgrade for me. A Intel i5 4 4590 processor, okay. But the processor I have on my PC, for example, is way better than that. So at least the processor doesn't seem to be too big of an issue. 8 gigs of RAM. Obviously, uh, for something like this, you're going to need a ton of RAM. Uh, and HDMI 1.3 video output. If you have a current or modern graphics card, you're going to have that kind of HDMI port anyway. Three USB 3.0 ports and a USB 2.0 port. Now, I don't know about you guys and gals, but for me, USB ports are an issue. Like, I've got so much stuff plugged into my PC, capture devices, this webcam, microphone, that I already had to go out and buy a USB 3.0 powered hub in order to even have all these devices hooked up. Now imagine you want to play your Oculus Rift, you need four more uh, USB ports, three of them 3.0 and one of them a 2.0. For me, that would be like, now you got to invest in another hub or something else in order to power all these USB ports, right? So, those requirements aren't cheap. In order to buy a decent level gaming PC, all right, that has all those requirements, probably would run you, I would think, in the realm of anywhere from $500 to $1,000. Now, incidentally, Oculus also announced that not only are they selling this Oculus Rift bundle for $599 US dollars, but if you don't have a gaming PC that you think could handle the Oculus Rift, they'll be selling bundles starting at $1,500 as well. That Those will be available for pre-order next month, and so you should pre-order your Oculus Rift now, and the next month upgrade to one of those bundles if you really want an Oculus Rift at launch. So, 
Basically, even Oculus is saying, yeah, it's going to run you around $900 for a decent end gaming PC to run the Oculus Rift. Now, of course, I'm sure that's the lower end, too. They could probably get one that's way overpowered for this thing for, next, you know, insane graphical detail. But, you know, most people are already spending $600 on the thing and several hundred on a gaming PC if you don't have one. How many people are going to be blowing thousands of dollars on this thing, Okay. So that's the big news today. It's available for pre-order. Now, I just want to make this clear. It's sold out in 14 minutes. 14 minutes. The entire first wave of pre-orders sold out. So you can still pre-order it, but you're not going to get the first batch. The first batch is coming out in late March. Apparently, the next batch is going to be sometime in April, but no one knows when yet. And the bottom line is probably that first batch is going to end up going to everyone who bought it who's like a reviewer or a tech junkie. You know what I mean? Those same people who line up outside of Apple every time there's a new iPhone probably all pre-ordered it real quick. And they're all going to get it and they're going to be doing videos on it and reviewing it and doing stuff like that. The common consumer, like you and me, probably won't be able to buy this thing at least until maybe April, May. Maybe the second or third wave of when this thing is going to be available. All right. They also did mention it will be available in stores in limited amounts. So guarantee when this hits store shelves in April, it's going to be in and out. Just like it was with the launch of the PS3 and the Xbox uh, 360 and, the, and stuff like that. It's going to be boom, 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 sold, sold, sold. So what is my overall take on this? Here's the thing. First of all. I am of a skeptic of virtual reality. I'm a skeptic of all of these insanely expensive, weird gaming peripherals that it seems the gaming media loves to tell us that they're going to change the way that gaming happens completely. It's going to be a brand new experience. It's going to completely change everything. Do you remember when the Wii was released and they said, look at this fancy Wiimo. This is going to change everything and you're never going to play a game the same again. And by the end of the Wii's life cycle, let's face it, the only games that really, truly implemented the full versatility of that Wiimote were party games. Bowling, Wii Tennis and Sports. You know, the, the first party Nintendo games that utilized it, honestly, a lot of people said, well, I could play Mario with motion controls, I'll just turn it sideways and play it like a normal Mario, because that's what I like. No one has any issue with standard controllers. Everyone likes them. You know, there's nothing wrong with this. No one has said, I want to abolish this. So why these game developers are so anxious to go to another form of control, I have no idea. What happened with the Wii U? Well, the motion controls are still there. No one really cares about it anymore. It was a flash in the pan gimmick that was successful for Nintendo. The motion controls don't matter. So what happened then? Oh, well, Sony's got to jump on that boat. And they have the PS Move with the big glowing balls and this another motion controller that looks just like the Wiimote. And they even showed off at E3, oh, look, here's a build of Little Big Planet and a creation game using this. This is going to completely change the way that games are played. And the PS Move was a miserable failure. And after two years, it's completely gone. You can't even, you can't even trade it in. You trade it in for like a nickel at game stop now and it's completely worthless because no one really developed games for it because no one cared right what about the microsoft connect oh my god was that shoved down our throat this is going to change the way gaming works you're going to have all motion you don't even need a controller it's you're the controller and you're going to talk to your tv and we all know how that went it didn't fucking work no matter what microsoft says about all oh, the space requirements and all that it didn't fucking work for the mainstream consumer and that's the problem is when you have all these crazy peripherals for gaming they need to appeal to the mainstream consumer and those devices did not for anything just a little gimmick of the wiimote was cool for a cool few years it died out and no one cares anymore so when you're looking at VR headsets, right? Well, let's see. I'm going to have a fucking giant box on my head. And from all reports, the Oculus Rift doesn't really strain the head or the eyes or anything like that. Although I'd be very curious to hear some research on people now that they actually buy the finished product who are playing this thing endlessly hours and hours a day. Does it screw with their eyes? Is their eye strain? What are the health ramifications of having a screen right in your fucking face all day? I don't think anyone knows because no one's tested it because it doesn't exist yet, right? But I digress. Having this box thing here, and now you're going to have a controller in your hands like this to move around, right? And you're going to be, it's, it's going to be a different experience. It's not going to be just you sitting on your couch or sitting in your computer chair and playing games anymore. What's it going to be? Is it going to be something that the mainstream gamer is going to want? I'm going to be honest with you. With a price point of $599, 
I don't think this is going to take off outside of the first year. I think this one year, 2016, it'll be huge because it's very simple. This is the first VR device ever that actually looks good, that from all reports from people who had the test kits, it actually like you know it does immerse you in games. And here's what's going to happen, and this is my opinion. You could disagree. This is my prediction. Tons of these things will sell just for the sheer gimmick of VR, right? Everyone will get one. Half of them won't work properly with people's PCs, and they're not going to like it because it's not going to look good or whatever. It's going to be choppy, but it's not going to run well, all right? Half the people who order it are going to play a few games with it, and then they're going to say, what did I buy this for? Because nothing really works with it. Now, if you look at, again, at the uh, press release here from Oculus, they list a ton of games that apparently are going to be coming out in the next year, including Rock Band VR, Edge of Nowhere by Insomniac, The Climb by Crytek. They even specifically call out that Minecraft will be working with this game by the end of the year. They also call out an exclusive platformer called Lucky's Tale and Eve Valkyrie, which are going to be the two games that are included in that $599 bundle for the launch of the Oculus Rift. Now, Eve Valkyrie isn't even out yet. It's this game here. It's some kind of a space shooter. All right. So... Is it any good? I don't know. Are you into EVE? Have you played EVE Online before? Because the game exists. It's actually an older PC MMO style game. If you're into that kind of stuff, maybe you'll like it. But how many people are into EVE Online? I don't know. And when you tell me Lucky's Tale, a platformer, EVE Valkyrie, and Minecraft are your biggest titles that are coming out in 2016, you know what I say? Where's my $566 going to go? Because the bottom line is, with any peripheral, it's not about the looks, it's not even about the functionality. It's about the price and the games. If there's nothing to play on this thing that requires it, that really immerses you and makes you feel like you're playing a different game or if it's a different, unique gameplay experience because you're using the Oculus Rift, who is going to throw down $599 for it? This first year of 2016, you're going to see a ridiculous amount of people who have this expendable money, right? They just have money to, to piss away. They're all going to rush out to be the first in line to get this because they want it. It's a fad now. They want to be cool. They want to be the in-person. Just like, the, like I said, with that new iPhone or any new device, they got to be the early adopters, right? And after a year, what's going to happen? Do you really think that people are going to buy this thing to play fucking Minecraft? The game's how old? You know what I mean? Like, if you told me right now, there's an amazing first-person shooter from a AAA game developer being made right now, and there's this really superb survival horror game being developed by, you know, shit, by Capcom, like a Resident Evil or a Silent Hill or something like that, then I'd be like, holy fucking shit, everyone wants this. But this is exactly what happened with all those other gaming peripherals I just mentioned. They make the device first... Then they try to get the developer support, and the developers, a lot of them drag their feet. They don't want to rush into game development for a new peripheral till they see if it sells or not. The initial games that come out for the thing suck, and then no one wants it. Remember when I played the games for the Kinect Rise of Nightmares and stuff? Was it bad? No. Was it great? Absolutely not. And you get so tired after playing the game for like an hour, you wouldn't want to fucking play it anymore. How many people realistically in this day and age are going to want to play Oculus Rift with this giant fucking thing on their head like this for four or five hours? Even when I do a gameplay session, I play for four hours, right? How many people want this giant device on their fucking head for four hours at a time? And that's the bottom line is even though the technology may be able to handle VR, is there enough demand for it right now is my question. And the answer, I think, to that question will be, well, what are the games? Because the games will create demand. And when you tell me Minecraft and some platformer no one's heard of and EVE, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the new version of EVE Online or whatever, I say, who cares? And that's ultimately going to be what sells the Oculus Rift, the games. And where are they, right? Now, there are some games in development for Rom to understand. What's that one? Star Citizen, which apparently has like a million people invested in their, their fundraising campaign and they can't wait for the game to come out. Apparently, that game is being developed to be used with the Oculus Rift as well. But for me, ultimately, what this is telling me, the Oculus Rift is going to be a PC gaming device. It's not going to be the next generation of gaming. It's not going to be the next big movement of gaming like all the gaming media are saying if you go and you read a fucking gaming magazine game informer just had a whole issue about vr and all they did the whole issue was kiss vr's ass oh it's gonna change everything just like they said ps move connect and everything else would change everything and nothing's fucking changed it's gonna be the same deal you're gonna have a certain group of gamers who like it and everyone else is gonna be like how does this fit into my equation i don't have a gaming pc i don't want to drop fifteen hundred dollars or more in order to use this thing and by the way what games do i really want to play on it 
And if you're someone who doesn't isn't into high-end PC gaming right now, the answer is there's probably nothing coming out for this thing that you want to play on it, right? There's no big titles. So, sorry, but $600 or $1,500, no matter what your situation is, it's too expensive. It's insanely expensive. Now, compare this to the upcoming PSVR, the PlayStation Virtual Reality device that Sony is developing for the PlayStation 4. Ah, now here's Sony's opportunity. Let's say they come into the market with a device that's very similar functionality to the Oculus Rift, but it only costs $200 to $250. What a difference in initial price point, right? And it works with your PlayStation 4 from the get-go. A system that exists already and has a huge installed base of gamers already. Now the game developers will say, well, oh shit, there's so many people who bought the PS4. We know that if we develop a game for the PS VR, there's a high chance that it's going to have some sales. Versus people who are just trying to adopt the Oculus Rift, they have to upgrade their computer, buy a new computer to get the Oculus Rift to work with it. With a $600 initial investment, this thing is could be a lot less. Now again, we don't know that's going to happen. We don't know that. That's rumors. We were rumored that the Oculus Rift was going to be $400 for years. It's rumored now that the PS VR is going to be around two to $250. We have to see what it actually comes out as, all right? But this is a huge opportunity right now for Sony to step up their game and come in with a cheaper price point, with a product that works with a, a, a console that's already installed in so many million homes, and to possibly actually get the leg up in the VR game. That's my take on it. Now, ultimately, I don't honestly think that VR is going to take off. I'm just telling you right now. I don't think it is. I think that, number one, there haven't been any kind of legitimate health studies or any kind of studies of people playing these things at extended periods of time. Imagine you buy a brand new AAA game and on first day or release day, you're going to binge in it. Oh, I got to put on my fucking giant VR headset. And you put it on and you're playing and after two and a half hours, you're getting a fucking kink in your neck because this thing's been weighing down your head the whole day. You get eye strain from the fucking thing. You know, who knows? Because we haven't done this yet. These games don't exist for it yet. No one's done this yet. So there's no research to say whether or not this thing is even fucking safe for extended gaming. Who would know? Besides people who maybe had the dev kits and played these in-development games that aren't even done yet. There's really nothing to fall back upon and say, is this going to be something that people are going to want? And ultimately, again, I have to ask the question, who said this and a TV isn't good enough? What, was there an overwhelming amount of gamers who came out and did not buy the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One because they said, it's too traditional, we don't want this and a TV anymore? No! People came out in fucking droves to buy those consoles. So if anything, it means this isn't outdated, this is more popular than ever, so why are we going around it to develop new ways to play games when the existing one is fine? Why is it that every year now, we get so many cookie-cutter games that aren't great, but now we get the fucking Oculus Rift. I don't care. Get, how about we have groundbreaking games first, then you design a groundbreaking device, and we can combine the two. That's the problem. We've got technology here that is advancing far too fast for the consumer to adopt. We just got 4K TVs out there, right? Now you're going to tell me, don't get the TV, buy an Oculus Rift or a PSVR. I just fucking bought a new TV, and now you're telling me it's outdated already to get something else. No one's going to care. At least in my opinion, from my take, from the common consumer, and I'm trying, you know, the only people who, like I said, who are really into this shit right now, this buzz, gaming media, because they want something to report on. If there's nothing to, to talk about, what the fuck, they have no jobs, right? And people who are these early adopters who are just techie, nerdist people who want to be the first to have the hottest new thing, regardless if it's even fucking good. These are the same people that ran out and buy the consoles, and they buy the new phones, they buy the fucking iWatches, and they buy the fucking Kinect and the PS Move, and they buy everything for the sake of just buying it and having it. Those are the people that are, that are initially supporting these product runs at launch, and then they fizzle out. So, ultimately, what do I think? I am a skeptic of virtual reality. I don't have any problem playing in this reality. I don't need to have a virtual reality. I like very much playing video games on my television with a controller. I have no problem with that. I'm not looking for anything beyond that. But maybe you are, so you could be different than me, and that's okay. It's okay to have an opinion, right? But at a $600 entry price point, oh yeah, and your PC probably won't support whatever the hell, you know, the Oculus Rift requires, that's insane. Like, that's just so ridiculous. And I, this is one of the biggest things I was thinking over the years. I was like, that's a big piece of equipment. That thing's not going to be cheap. You know what I mean? That thing is not going to be cheap. And how are you going to sell that thing? And I don't know. 
I think, like I said, this, of course, the first wave sold out in 14 minutes. You could still pre-order it. It'll, like I said, it'll probably be sold, sold, sold for the rest of 2016. And then after the first year, when there really aren't many games to play that are worth having the headset, and people are starting to report issues with these things, and you start to have things with eye strain and stuff, who's going to want it? And that's my, well, I'm, I'm definitely, from my situation, I'm taking a wait-and-see attitude. Like, the only thing in my PC that isn't up to snuff for the Oculus Rift is the graphics card, which is an easy upgrade. I am not doing shit. No way am I bothering right now. If anything, I'll wait for the next version that comes out next year or whatever where they got the bugs worked out. I've had enough with this adopting shit early on and then it has 100 issues with it and it doesn't fucking work. Let them figure that stuff out first, and then, <laughs> then I'll think, you know, in a year's time, if VR is the hot thing and everyone wants to do it, and everyone wants to see me try out the Oculus Rift or the PlayStation VR or whatever, then I'll jump into it. But there's no way with a $600 price point and the fact that I have to upgrade my PC to even fucking use it, that I would even consider doing it when the best thing I'll be playing is some kind of a cheesy platformer, Eve, or fucking Minecraft. Get the hell out of here. You know what I mean? Sell me on the Oculus, and they haven't done that. It seems to me like all they're doing is saying, here it is. And like I said, the early adopters, the nerdists, the people that go crazy over the new stuff. Oh, blah, 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 but you haven't sold it to the mainstream. Who's The mainstream person is like, what the fuck is this, and why do I care? And that's what I really feel the attitudes are out there right now. So That's what's going on right now with the Oculus Rift. What do you think? Leave a comment on this video and give me your opinion, all right? Thanks everyone for watching this video, and I'll see you later.